Hey guys, and welcome back to a new video of the playlist UX with Material 3. In this video, we will talk about, I will talk about how we can build a top app bar. So basically the toolbar, which you know from pretty much all uh, Material 3 apps or Material Design apps in general, which is this thing up here, because quite some things changed there compared to Material 2. And in this video, I will not only show you how we can implement a, such a top app bar in our app, but also what you need to consider to ensure your app has a good user experience. And that includes the officially recommended scroll effect. So if we scroll a list here, you can see that the color of our top app bar turns a little bit um, yeah, darker depending on what our uh, theme colors are. That is recommended so that we can actually um, see a separation between our top app bar and the scrollable content. And before we start to implement this, we should first understand what the goal of such a top app bar is. So in which scenarios should we use it and what should we use it for? So there are two main reasons why we use a top app bar. On the one hand, it should just give the user a hint where they currently are in the app. That is done with a title. So each top app bar comes with such a title like my notes. So this would indicate, hey, you're currently at a screen um, with a list of notes. But if we would navigate, then we would display another top app bar um, and also adjust the title to whatever that screen represents. And in addition, we also have the option to have some icons as additional actions for that screen. On the one hand, that can be a navigation action on the left here, so to either navigate back to the previous screen or to open a navigation drawer menu. And on the other hand, those can be flexible other actions in form of these icons on the right side here. So in this case, this could be like marking a note as a favorite, editing a note, and similar contextual actions. But let's dive into coding and see how we can now implement this in a user-friendly way. I am here in an anti Jetpack Compose Material 3 project. I only have this initial surface and inside of the surface, we now want to add our top app bar. However, with most of these Material 3 components, we don't just want to put them directly in our surface. Instead, we want to use a component called a scaffold. So a scaffold can simply be created exactly like that. And that is basically a container for these typical material design components. So it is the scaffold which will make sure that our top app bar really gets placed here at the top. It makes sure that our scrollable content down here has the correct padding applied so that it actually starts below our top app bar and not uh, at the top of our screen. And later on, we can add many more of such material three components. Um, so we will talk about adding a bottom app bar. We will talk about adding a bottom navigation. We will talk about adding a navigation drawer. So there are a lot of these uh, material three components and the scaffold is basically just the container which combines all of these and takes us the effort to needing to place these manually and remembering all these guidelines when it comes to placing these on our screen. So for the scaffold, we can just pass in a modifier here of modifier, uh, modifier, this one here, dot fill max size. Then we get these padding values here, which we can give a name. And this is a typical error you get if you don't use these values. So um, you can see content padding parameter values is not used. And these values are used for exactly what I just mentioned. Um, so if we would just place our lazy list in here, so lazy column, um, let's just add some sample items, modifier, fill max size. And here in this lazy column, we can then add an items block with let's say 100 items. And for each item, we can display a text that says item and the corresponding index. We can also give each item a little bit of padding um, with a modifier. So modifier is modifier.padding 16 dp. If you would do it just like this, then our top app bar would actually be placed on top of the very first item. So on top of item zero, because we don't take the padding. So these padding values the scaffold gives us and apply that to our lazy column. So our lazy column actually gets moved down by the uh, height of our top app bar. So that is why you should always use these uh, padding values and apply these to the root composable that you have inside of your scaffold. So in this case, here for the lazy column, we can say padding and we add these values. But coming to our top app bar, where do we now add that? Uh, that is going to be added inside the scaffold function. Um, if we hit uh, command P here or control P, then we can see all the different parameters we could pass here. And most of these are just lambdas, which are these material three components. So we have a floating action button here. We have a snack bar host, but we also have this top bar. And whatever you put in here will be placed at the top of our screen at exactly that position where we want to have that top app bar. And in here is the place where we want to add our top app bar. 
And there are different variants of this top app bar. So this uh, standard top app bar is just the one that I showed you. So this, um, it's also considered the small top app bar, but there are more. There's also a center aligned top app bar. So with that, the title text would just be center aligned and the rest would be the same. Uh, that is considered to be used for the root screen of your app to show the user, hey, this is really the root. And from here, you can get to all other screens. Then you also have this medium top app bar, which is basically a top app bar that is uh, twice as high as the normal app bar. And for this top app bar, the title would display below this navigation icon. So it would just display here and the top app bar would just be um, higher than the small one. That is recommended if your title is just longer and your user just needs more context to um, understand where they currently are in the app. And then there's also a large top app bar, which is pretty much the same as the medium one, just that you have even more space for your title. But let's see how these look like in practice. And we start with the normal small top app bar. Let's get rid of this lambda. And in here we can now explore the options or the, the type of configuration uh, we can actually make here. On the one hand, the title, that should be self-explanatory. So in here, we would put our text composable that says whatever screen we are on. So in this case, we could say my notes. Then uh, let's take a further look. We do have a modifier. We normally don't need to touch this for these material components because the scaffold already makes sure that they are properly placed. So in general, using these material three components is uh, pretty much idiot proof. And if you don't really customize anything here, which you shouldn't customize, like typically those are the colors, um, those are the uh, dimensions of a material three composable, and that is typically the shape. So if you change that, then it's very likely you will violate some kind of material three guideline. But if you leave it just as these uh, default composables provide for you, then you can do much wrong. But what is interesting here is the navigation icon. This is optional, so if you want the user to be able to navigate back or open a menu, then you can do this here. So that would just be a simple icon button. Make sure it's really an icon button, otherwise um, there won't be a real uh, touch area size so that the user has some space to touch it. I'll just leave the on click empty and in here we can add an icon, whatever we want to show for that uh, navigation action. And here. There are really only two uh, variants that should be used. On the one hand, that is icons default dot back arrow back actually. Um, so that is exactly the one that I showed you here. So we can set the content description to go back, which is just this back arrow here, so the user can get to the previous screen. Here, you need me to make sure that you use your nav controller and uh, pop the back stack or navigate up. Or alternatively, if you have a menu, then you can also use the menu icon which are these uh, three horizontal lines, which are typically used to open a navigation drawer. Let's leave this here and take a look at the next parameter we can pass here. And that is an actions lambda. Actions are considered to be the icon buttons, which we can click on to have yeah, just some extra contextual functionality for that screen. So for our notes list, this could be marking a note as a favorite. This could be editing a specific note. It could be maybe adding a new note. And for that, you just create a bunch of icon buttons, which would be self-explanatory. Um, so you should just tell by looking at the icon what happens when you click on it. So we can say icon button. In here, we add an icon. Image vector is icons default. Let's say favorite border to mark something as a favorite icon. Content description could be mark as favorite. And for these, uh, it's quite important that you actually choose a content description just for accessibility reasons, because it really might not always be super obvious for, for everyone um, what this icon represents, or also for people who might use screen readers, um, they can simply then read out loud what a specific icon represents or what, what would happen if you click on it. And then we can just take this icon button and add one more. So we are inside of a row here, as you can see. So we can just put these here one after another and these will be all already um, arranged in a row. The spacing will already be considered by this actions block. So we really just need to focus on adding these buttons. This one here could be added, for example, and we could say added notes or so, so maybe a bulk added feature and so on. Um, so an important guideline here with this top app bar is if we take a look here, then it's only allowed to add up to three of these, navig uh, not navigation action, up to three of these icon actions. So we could add one more here, but if you would add a fourth one, then the last one, so the, the most right one would need to be changed to this menu icon 
And if you click on the menu icon, uh, you should open a pop-up menu instead with all the different options uh, that didn't fit directly here on this toolbar. So if you have up to three actions, everything is good. If you have more, you need to use a pop-up menu for the least prominent ones. And if we now take a look, um, we still got an error here because we need to add these uh, material, experimental material three API. I'll enter to add that here to main activity. And we could already try this out to see how this looks like. We're not done yet because there's still something I want to show you. There we go. You can see we have our menu icon, we have our favorite icon, our edit icon, and our uh, toolbar title. But something that doesn't work yet is if we scroll here, you will see that there isn't much visual separation between our top app bar and our scrollable lazy column. In Material 3, these top app bars were typically much more prominent by giving them the primary color of your app. In Material 3, that was changed, so they are uh, not very prominent in terms of coloring, but there should be some visual separation when we actually scroll. And that is done by just coloring this top app bar when we scroll. But how do we do that? That is effectively an animation that depends on our scroll state. And luckily that is quite easy with the top app bar composable that is already provided here. If we take a look, then you can also see that we can pass the scroll behavior here. And with that, we can define in how far this app bar should be hidden or how should it behave when we scroll uh, some scrollable content. And to implement this in practice, we want to go ahead and create the scroll behavior, which is equal to top app bar defaults dot exit until call app scroll behavior, pin scroll behavior, or enter always scroll behavior. So there are different of these scroll behaviors. The most straightforward one is this pin scroll behavior. So that means the, the um, toolbar is always showing, but it will change its color when we're scrolling. Enter always scroll behavior means that the uh, toolbar gets hidden when we scroll up, and it always gets shown when we scroll down, no matter where we are with the scrollable content. And exit until collapse scroll behavior means that it will uh, hide when we scroll and it will only show if we were at the complete uh, top again. So let's use pin scroll behavior first of all. We now want to scroll down and add this here to our top app bar. So scroll behavior is our scroll behavior. And we still aren't done yet because we need to also connect the scroll behavior to our lazy column or rather to our scaffold because our scaffold contains the scrollable content. And right now we only applied this to our top app bar, but it doesn't really know the scrollable content yet. And we do that with a so-called nested scroll connection. And that is very simple because the, this connection is already contained inside of this behavior. So we just need to go to our scaffold and say dot nested scroll at the modifier, and we add scroll behavior dot nested scroll connection. So that way we just connect this scroll behavior with our scaffold which we have passed to our top app bar here. And if we now launch this and take a look, if we now scroll up, then you will see that our top app bar will yeah, have a little color animation as we scroll. And that is because we've used this pinned scroll behavior. If we change this to, let's say, enter always scroll behavior, relaunch the app, take a look here. If we now scroll, then the toolbar gets hidden if we scroll up, then it's, it immediately gets shown again. So that is exactly what I mentioned before. And we do have exit until collapse scroll behavior. If we launch this, if we now scroll, it gets hidden immediately. If we scroll up, then it does not get shown immediately unless we scroll completely to the top. And what you choose here is completely up to you. So there is no general right or wrong. Um, it depends on the screen and what would be more user friendly, but I can give you a general recommendation here. Um, but let's just leave this as pinned for this use case. This typically makes sense if you always want to give the user these contextual actions. Um, so no, ma no matter if they scrolled or not, but if these actions are rather independent of the scrollable content, then it makes sense to think about these other two scroll types. And that's pretty much everything I want to show you about the, the top app bar. There are still more properties if we take a look. Um, there are window insets and colors. So window insets are, are basically the offset values of the top app bar and the colors are yeah, pretty self-explanatory. Self um, so the colors of the container and things like that. But I don't want to change this. I also don't want to recommend you to change this because this composable by default already encodes all these material three guidelines. So you'll automatically stick to these if you don't change anything uh, further than what I've showed you. But what we can take a look at is 
the different types of top app bars. So we just took a look at the small one. We can also take a look at the center aligned top app bar. So the parameters don't change. If we launch this, take a look here, then you can see now uh, the title is centered, but the rest is exactly the same. So again, this should be used for the root screen of your app and the normal small top app bar for other screens that aren't the root screen. We then also have the medium top app bar. If we launch this, take a look, then you can see now the title is below our icon. So if you have a longer title, which wouldn't fit into a small app bar, uh, then you can use this to give a little bit more context. And we finally also have the large top app bar. If we take a look at that, then you can see there is even more space for the title. And here you could even have a line break in the title, so then it wouldn't jump up, I think. If we scroll, um, this time it does not change the color, which is kind of weird, but I guess that is intended because we use the official pinned scroll behavior connection. We can also try to make it enter always scroll behavior, see if that changes something. Take a look here, and then, ah, uh, yes. Okay, um, you can see there is an additional uh, animation that it will turn into this small app bar connection when we have a large app bar. Um, so that is definitely intended in that case. I don't know that, but yeah, feel free to play around with that, of course. Cool, that is it about top app bar. In the next video, we will talk about bottom app bars. So there's also a comparable bar just for the bottom. We can also use both together. So definitely don't miss the next video. And if you also don't want to miss what kind of big mistakes you can make when using Jetpack Compose, then definitely check this link below because I prepared a free PDF for you where I describe exactly 20 of these deadly mistakes you can make with Jetpack Compose. So click the link below and get the free PDF. Other than that, thank you for watching the video and I will see you back in the next one about bottom app bars. Bye bye.